What's going on, guys? I just wanted to um, show you guys that I am reinvesting into the channel. Just something um, to make the video quality better, something to make the audio quality better. Um, I'm not, I haven't used it yet. I haven't even unboxed it. I really didn't like the audio quality from the last video with the wind blowing. So um, I decided to invest in this um, to make the experience better for you guys. Okay guys, first time using the camera setup. First time using the camera setup. Hopefully you guys can hear me a little bit better. Um, today I'm gonna be changing my brakes on the C63S. Appreciate you guys for uh, staying tuned. Definitely like, comment, and subscribe. Definitely um, share if you find any of this uh, information interesting. Okay guys, let's take a look at the hardware. First thing I'll say is actually, so, so AutoZone had the fronts and advanced auto parts had the rears that was the first thing that was hard to find was to actually get the parts the front brake pads no sensors but i just want to say that i've had um quite a few cars i've had an srt charger i've had mustangs so these are the biggest brake pads that i've ever seen and um you know i i get why you know you need it and it, after seeing these brake pads, I understand like why the car stops the way that it does. This is, this is the cast iron um, brakes that I have on my car. Um, this car actually does come with the carbon ceramic brakes. I didn't have that package on my vehicle. These are just the cast iron brakes. And I can tell you that I honestly don't even know why you would need the carbon ceramic brakes. I'm just being honest with you. These are more than enough. Um, they stop on a dime. Um, you know, they're, they're quite like aggressive and they're kind of like bitey brakes like when you hit the brakes instantly you know it starts slowing down but the issue with these are that they have brake fade so after you drive it for a while it, it stops being as aggressive so that's why they came out with the carbon ceramic brakes but honestly just from my experience like you don't need the carbon ceramic brakes and man they are a hell of a price you know of course you want to loosen the wheel the lugs and yeah let, let's let's get started while i still got some sunlight Now we're gonna start off with the front first. Um, from what I can see so far, it looks like the fronts are gonna be easier um, than the backs. The fronts look kind of straightforward. So guys, um, when you're doing this, you kind of do want to use jack stands, but um, instead I'm just putting the tire under the car. Um, and I do have the air compressor and I do have the air gun, but I kind of just want to use the same tool that you guys would um, have at home. Sometimes air compressor then things of that nature takes more time to set up than they're actually useful you know sometimes the old-fashioned ways actually quicker so um yeah I just used the um, extension and I just used the hammer and I just hit in those pins and now I gotta get something to uh, pull it out on the other side so guys what I would recommend is start off with an extension then finish it off with a smaller needle nose um, punch this is actually um, a, a torx actually but I'm gonna use it um, to knock this out the rest of the way I don't know if you guys can see it coming out on the other side then you do the bottom so this is the bottom pin right here this is what it looks like I don't know if you guys can see that yeah this is what the bottom pin looks like uh, here's the top pin so we're gonna put the bottom at the bottom, the top one at the top. I just like to put everything back the same way. So it has a bracket right here holding it on. So this bolt right here is actually a 13. Hit this out from this side, but you kinda wanna put back in the bolt to not mess up the threads. Sorry about the brief intermission. Had a few things happen, had my camera died. But so what I did was I hit, I hit this bolt right here um, I'm not even really too sure what you call this, but this right here is the last thing that's holding in the brake pads along with the pistons, but I hit it with, you know, WD-40, um, but this is similar and you just hit it on all of the areas and then, um, you just let it sit for a while. And before you put this stuff back in, you want to make sure everything's well greased up. That's what I like to do. I like to put grease on it, um, where it's supposed to be at. 
and um clean it off clean clean the things that are supposed to be cleaned um i don't actually think this is supposed to come out the whole way i just think it's supposed to move out of the way like this so you want to set this bolt um to the side somewhere where you can find them and set it right here and now it comes time to take out the brake pads and what i've what i've learned is so it's just coming out now so you just kind of pry it out and this is um, a trick that I've learned from SRTs and things of that nature. So now how are you gonna get the pistons back in? Um, usually you would undo the bleed screw, but what I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna, um, instead of undoing the bleeder screw, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up the top of the brake fluid reservoir. Now see, I don't even have to do that right there. I just pop that up like that. And this is the steering fluid and brake fluid reservoir. Uh, most of the time, uh, brake fluid and steering fluid is actually the same thing. Brake fluid and steering wheel fluid is actually the same thing. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna open this and um, that should uh, let out some of the air. So it makes it easier to take out the brake pads. Um, of course, you still wanna bleed your brakes, but um, that does save save a little bit of time. And you just want to pry it out. You pry it out. Like I said the second one's always a lot easier to come out. The second one's always a lot easier to come out. I don't know if you guys can see that. This is the new one. This is the old one. Yeah, it was about time. It, it needed to be changed. <laughs> so it looks like they're actually identical. So it doesn't really look like it. Um, it matters which one, inside or outside. It looks like they're pretty much identical. But now we got to get back in the calipers. So me personally, me personally, guys, what I like to do is um, clean all the areas that I can that I wouldn't normally be able to clean while the um, while the brake pads were on. I just like to wipe those down while I have a second, while I have a chance, while I have the space to do so. Yeah, so usually you would be able to, uh, you just have to undo the bleeder screw, but I just like to open up um, the reservoir at the top just slightly to um, let the air bubbles come out this way instead of down at the bottom. What I like to do, pry it in. Yep, so these are now flush. You guys are probably gonna be able to see it better on this side, on the inside calip caliper pistons. Um, really, I could do it like that both times around. You just kind of pry it in, and instead of instead of the fluid getting leaked out of here through the res to the bleed screw, it's getting the air is getting pushed out at the top. So that's where the the air is going, and you don't want to push it in too far. It doesn't have to go in too far, but just push it in enough so that just push it, push them in enough so that the new brake pads can fit so on the outside um on the outside brake pad this hole should be at the bottom it's an it's a extra hole should be at the bottom on the inside brake pad this hole should be at the top i just like to put it back the way that i found it so you just put that in like that lock that in and now you want to put the grease where it's supposed to go um, as far as grease goes, of course they have um, better grease than this, but this is actually military grade. I like this stuff right here. It's better than WD-40 in my opinion. You guys can see that. So you just kind of wipe it down, let it sit for a second. And just put, pop that in. Right. So the brake pads are in. These are the old brake pads. Okay, guys. After you figure out how to um, reinsert this pin, you tighten this down. Again, like I said, my best tip is to never over tighten these bolts um, because they will snap and break, and that's an issue you don't want. So now we're gonna put back in the pins. Again, you kind of want to wipe them down, wipe down the pins, and um, just spray some uh, lubrication on there. You want to spray some lubrication on there. 
then you just want to put put both of them back into their proper holes then you just want to line this back up then you want to um put the bottom pin in so now you just kind of want to lightly tap the back of the pins once you get the first one lined up uh, once you get the first one lined up it's kind of easier to get the second one lined up okay now the second pin is lined up now you just kind of want to hit um, what I like to do just put a little bit of lubrication at the back of the pins you want to grab this right here and just give it a few taps make sure that that o-ring is seated or the ring is seated is again you got to make sure that the reservoir is tight and you want to go inside and pump the brakes Okay guys, so this is the passenger side of the um, C63. Um, it actually has a sensor on this side. It didn't have a sensor on the other side, but it does have a sensor on this side. Um, all you did is, uh, it's a pin, you pop that out. A little thin pin, you just pop it out, then you just put it back in. Um, another difference is I've realized how you can hit back in the this um, pin right here. Um, what I did the second time around was I actually found something that protrudes out, something like this. This is actually for a chainsaw, actually. So you just put this on right here, and then you just tap it in like that. And it goes in a lot easier. So I, I figured that out for the second go around. But um, as, far as, um, as far as the front goes, I'll give this, um, I want to say, um, a 5 out of 10 in difficulty. Really, maybe like a four, four or five out of ten in difficulty. So, okay, guys, let's start with the rear brake pads. The rear brake pad on um, bolts are a thirteen, also. Okay, guys, after you get the um the two bolts off, the one at the top, one at the bottom, then you just take off the caliper, take off the whole caliper like this. You just set it. I like to set it on the tire so it's not hanging. Again, while you got it off, just try to clean what you can clean. While you have the caliper off, just try to clean what you can clean. Pads on this side are pretty easy to take off. You just pop them off like so. That's how you do it. Try to wipe down as best as you can. Now we're gonna look at how we take the sensor off. I believe it's, oh, this comes straight up. The sensor's at the back and they just come straight up. Go straight in, come straight up. So I don't know if you can see that guys. Um, this the sensor right here. Um, it goes into the, that hole. I'm not sure if you can see that hole. And you just slide that in like that. And this is actually what lets the car know when the brakes need to be changed. So I'm not sure if you guys heard it click. So yeah, guys. So before you can actually um, change the back brakes, 
you actually have to go into the workshop menu and how you get to the workshop menu is you hit the call button and the okay button at the same time you hold that for, for a few seconds side note this only works if you're on the trip screen and the dis and it's displaying the miles make sure all the doors are closed and make sure that the ignition is just on one time just press the button one time let me get to the workshop page for you guys after you hold the call button and the okay button for a few seconds it'll go to this page right here you want to scroll down to brake pad replacement and then you want to hit okay and then you'll hear the brake start um winding themselves back in Now we got the caliper in, and now we got the first brake pad on. Caliper in, we got the caliper pushed in, brake pad on, and sensor installed. Tight fit. Push this through. The back side, you want to push the sensor through the back side of the caliper, then slide the caliper back on. Okay. Slide the caliper back in. Then you want to slide the caliper back in place, like so. Okay. Now we do have new um, bolts. These were the old bolts. These were the old bolts right here. Um, these are the new bolts right here. I'm, I'm going to use the new bolts because they come with um, Loctite on the bolts. So, the work. Um, I, I just like to put the grease right here at the tip, not too much, a little bit right there, a little bit right there, and that's how I do it. Keeps everything lubricated like how it's supposed to be. Push it on like so. Now let's put a little bit of grease on the back um, brake pad. Touch a little bit, just touch a little bit at the top and a little bit at the bottom. Like I said, that's just how I do it. Yeah. Then you want to stick the sensor back through this way. And now we're gonna put back on the bolts. Like I said, we are using the new bolts because they come with Loctite on or thread lock on the new bolts. Yep, so that's in. So now let's just go ahead and tighten up these bolts. Thank you, thank you, thank you for everybody that made it to this point of the video. Um, that is how you change your brakes on your 2016. C63S. Hopefully you guys found this video entertaining. Hopefully you guys learned something from it. Definitely I would love your feedback. Um, just leave a comment. I'm going to try to respond to all the comments that get left. Alright guys, till next time.